What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. I'm your host Siren Frost and today I'll be doing a deck profile update and hopefully my final one until I get the last card I needed, which I'll tell you later. But um tonight I'll be doing my updated deck profile featuring my Shao Palvin Luar deck. Um I know the last video I've noticed that there's been a uh, not so many ple pleasant likes on there, but you know that's why I kind of realized some people just probably didn't like what I said or build. Do me a favor. If you guys don't like the videos at all, and you don't, but you don't have the balls to literally say anything what's wrong with the deck profile or anything like that, then do me a favor. Just keep the comments to yourself. I just don't want to hear them. This is my channel, and I will do it however I want to do them, whether people like it or not. And, yeah. But that's not my intention if it's like a bad video. So I'm, you, of course I'm going to fix it. And my camera is just like crazy like that. I don't know why. Anyways, um, so let's get on with the deck. We're just going to dive right into the deck, into the deck profile. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, guys. So my starting vanguard is um, Drag Prince Root, of course. Now, I was actually going to have the intention of making this one uh, Commanding Knight Nisa. But... Her ritual is a little bit different than what I'm used to. Plus, his ability is kind of sick. I mean, it gives your vanguard like 5,000 more power. So, of course, it's not a big of an issue right there. So, we're just going to put him right here. And, of course, when he's uh, paid, for, when he's used for a cost, for a retiring, co retiring cost, <laughs> uh, you can't blast one, you put him into the soul, and you can choose one of your uh, units on the field. And it gains 5,000 power into that turn. So that's actually a pretty good effect. Now, I'm thinking about writing maybe two of him, but that's a big if. Um, for triggers, I'm playing four copies of Abyss Grail, just because I love the artwork and I love the angels. And my other heal triggers were based on female types. Or, um, my last one was basically, <laughs> uh, Illegal Alchemist kind of thing. I don't like Illegal Alchemist either. I think he's kind of a, a pointless trigger, but not because I don't believe in Satan. It's probably because, you know, he's just not for me. And then we're playing four stands in his deck. Uh, we're playing uh, Zor. And everyone's... And he's very useful, especially when it comes to Diablo players, which, you know, that's a big sadness right there, but whatever. Um, his skill is, when he's used for... he When he's used for retiring cost, he counts as two sacrifices. So... When you just, you can shove him into drop, you can put him into drop zone along with another one to pay for Diablo's uh, counter blast to sacrifice, take off three. And then when he's paid for the cost, um, he goes back into your deck and, and shuffles. So basically, you can still use him again and again, like a recycle, a free recycle. Next, I'm playing different crits, but we're because, because we're playing in, um, we're trying to play in within the United Sanctuary flags, and this whole deck has a lot of United Sanctuary flags in it. Um, so I'm playing four Rapid Muse for the... And then four Dead Crash Dragons for the crit triggers. And now, I could probably turn these two into a uh, Revenger Undead Angel and Leaping Nugs because if I want to make this deck shiny, that's possible. But, you know, crits are crits, so it doesn't really kind of matter at this point. So... That is a trigger lineup for grade zeros. For grade ones, we are playing th four copies of Drag Drag Wizard Neats. Now, this stack profile is basically close to uh, Kazuma's Kazuma's um, anime deck. So, don't hate me, you know, just for trying to bring some character feel into this deck. Um, what he does when he's called from the rear guard from the, from the deck. His ritual ability activates and he gains plus 2,000 power. At the end of the battle that this unit boosted a uh, unit, you you suck off that the boosted unit and you can draw a free card. And, and also a counter blast. So, sorry for that counter blast last minute. Uh, next, we're playing four um, Abyssal Owls. Just because he, when, he's when he's placed in the, in the rear guard from the hand, you can look at the top seven cards of your deck and search for a card named Luar in his name. Add to your hand, shuffle your deck, rest, put the rest of the cards in the deck, shuffle, 
and you have to discard the same number of cards that Luard is, which is three. So if you have the, if you have a grade three in your hand, just discard it. And when he's paying for the costs of a sacrifice, you you get a free counter charge, which is an amazing thing to have. So I can see why people run four of him, maybe three or two. I don't know, but I like it. Next, I changed up a little bit for my last one. I'm playing two sword breakers just because she's a very good card to have, especially when you're soul blasting one and draw a free card. Basically, the whole deck is all about draw power. If the more cards you have in your hand, the more side, the more possibilities you have to guard all your opponent's attacks, depending on the, how much the total is. If they're above eleven thousand, keep discard, guard or no guard, what do you prefer? Um, I'm playing four copies of Karma Collector just because, um, I don't see the point about playing just two Azrazes. I just think that's kind of a waste. And not that I have anything against Karma Collector. I mean, his ability kind of helps out very handily. But I prefer to have a full playset of Az of, of Drag, Drag Saver Azraz. But in my last case boxes, I didn't only pull, I only pulled two. So it sucks. So until then, I'm stuck with Karma Collector for the rest of the time. And, yep, that's just pretty much it for grade ones. I mean, I like I said, guys, I don't have anything against Karma Collector. I just prefer to use Azraz because this is a full ritual deck. And I think it's more appropriate. But that's just me. Next, I'm playing four copies of Drag Wizard Leofol. Uh, what he does, his active skill, is you Soul Blast one and choose one of your rear guards and force off the field. And you basically draw a free card. Well, actually, if you return the same the same card in the same column as Leofall, you can you can draw a card. And his um, as for his ritual, he gains plus two thousand power when he attacks, so he'll be eleven k based by himself. Next, I'm playing four copies of Drag Wizard Morfessa. I finally got my full playset, so I'm happy. Um, I changed this deck up so many times to fill my more playset. Morfessa is a very much an essential card. I never knew how much essential she is until I read her effect, and I've seen so many deck profiles on YouTube that, you know, think of her as an essential card. Some people play three or two. I prefer to max her out to four. And her ritual ability is um, she gains 5,000 power when she attacks, and she also gets a, another ability, Counterblast, Counterblast 1. When this unit attack hit, we pay the cost, and if you do, Search for one grade one card from your deck and superior call it and shuffle your deck. And as long as it's in the drop zone, it counts as a as a grade one unit. So it loses a a grade one. Uh yeah. It get, it gets downgraded to grade one. So that's pretty much easy. It this actually helps you out with ritual a lot more. Next I'm playing my all time favorite uh, grade two and will always be my app my avatar to the deck and a connection to me is three copies of Scornful Knight Giva. Now, you guys can shove your comments up your asses because this is not going to change. Believe me, I tried with Maka. I have nothing against Maka. I just don't use her. And Giva provides more draw power to, this, to the field. And not only that, if you think about it, she helps you get more grade ones in the drop zone that you need to have for Ritual. People tend to forget this. The deck is all about Ritual, Sacrificing, and gain number of grade ones within the drop zone in order to use ritual at all. So that's why I chose three Givas. And despite her being a 7k attacker for a grade two, she can do still do a lot of damage. I have faith in this card and I always will. Whether you people like it or not. And finally for grade threes, we're playing three four copies of the main guy. Dragheart Luard. Stride skill is you retire one rear guard and you superior call two graded one units from your deck. And then, uh, ritual. As long as you have three or more graded ones in the gra in the graveyard, you can put two normal units back into the bottom of your deck, and you can stride without paying any cost at all. So that is a s huge deal for me. And I know many people don't think it's a very hype thing to do, but I think it's just an amazing thing compared to what Clary Sword does. Shut up, you phone. I'm trying to vlog here. Ugh. And next, I'm playing two copies of Knight of Serial Blade Diarmude. Someone told me that this card is a very good card to have. 
His ritual ability is... I better read this carefully before I screw it up. Uh, duration break one, ritual three. Choose one of your other rare guards and retire it. When this unit attacks a vanguard, you pay the cost. And if you do, this unit gets 3k power until the end of that battle. And at the end of that battle, your opponent chooses one of his or her rear guards and retires it. So it's a free skill to retire. And it's almost similar to us, Desperate? Yeah. And speaking of which, our final grade 3 is two copies of Death Spray Dragon. So Carablast 1 in the Vanguard Rear Guard Circle. When his unit... Um... Oh, and choose... Choose one of your rear guards and force it off to the field. When at the end of this battle, this unit, this unit attacked... Your your opponent must choose one of her, his or her rear guards and force off the field. If that's the full right effect. Yeah. At the end of battle, this unit attacks the vanguard, pay the cost. If you do, choose up the one of your opponent's rear guards and retires it. So, this may be a problem for Legion's, Legion decks because I know some people playing are playing the Overlord series, which is which sucks. But, it's just because I'm not a very huge Kagero fan. I mean, I tried it, I gave it a chance, but it's just not for me. So that's the main deck, guys. And uh, now for the G deck that we all love, no one love. I'm playing the four copies of the main boss, Drag Driver Luard. And one of them is an SP because I got the clan pack for everything bleeding out to SP, which I don't like. And once I get another copy of this variant right here, the Ultra Rare, or the Triple Rare, I'm going to put him in the collection just because, you know, I like to have a collection of that. So anyways, four copies of him. I'm going to max him out. And his ability is Soul Blast 1 and choose face down card from your G zone and turn it face up. When his unit is placed in the Vanguard Star, go pay the cost. And if you do, search for up to one, up to number of grade 1 cards in your deck equal to the number of face up drag driver Luars in your G zone. Call them separate rare guards. Shuffle your deck and for each grade 1 called in your drop zone, those unit gets 1000 power in a turn. So if you have at least 3 Luars on the face up, all your rare guards that were called by that gets 3000 power. I think that's amazing as hell. Next, before you all butcher me, I'm going to play this because I'm going to show proof. I am playing three, four copies of Phantom Blaster Dark, Phantom Blaster Diablo. I, but he's only my my last finisher. Like, he's only a finisher to me. He's not the main guy. He's not the deck that with the deck revolves around. So don't get any ideas about him. So we all know what he kind of does. So I'm not going to really explain what he fully does exactly. Just because everyone is running him like a motherfucker. And yeah. So there's no real reason for saying that. Next I'm playing two Spectral Blaster, Dia Spectral Blaster Diablos. Um, just because the combination of the both Blasters. Both Diablos are pretty much an essential. And his ability is uh, Soul Blast 1. And she's a face down Carnage Zone. Turn face up. And she's one of your rear guards and retire it. And to the end of that turn this unit gets a new skill. Generation Break 3. So set Carablast 2 and choose two of your rear guards and retire them. At the end of the battle, this unit attack the Vanguard and pay the cost. And if you do, stand this unit. And this unit gets, loses Drive Check, Drive Check 2. And if you have a hard card with Diablo in its name, search for one Grade 1 and call the rear guard and show for your deck. Fortunately, we don't have uh, Blaster Dark Diablo in here, so nope, we can't use that effect. But the other is fine. You all convinced me that it's a very essential thing to have special, the Diablo Brothers in here. So this is what is happening. Next, we're playing two copies of Carnivore Dragon, just because he's one of the best great fours I like, per se. Choose one of your rear guard. Choose one of your rear guards and retire it. And you have to, your opponent must choose two of his or her rear guards and force them onto the field. That's actually pretty good. It reduces your chances your, for your opponent to guard more against your again when you're attacking the vanguard. And then finally, for four copies of Plot Maker Dragon and four generation guards. And his skill is Ritual at 10,000 power. That's it. That's all you basically do. And I think that's pretty much an essential wall right there. And the funny thing is, they're all Dark Dragons. <laughs> and that's the funny thing because I have a Dark Dragon tattoo right there. Even though it's not the perfect kind, but you know what? Who am I to say? So anyways, guys, that is the conclusion of the deck profile update of my uh, Luar uh deck profile um be sure to subscribe like this video thumbs up for it and as always guys there'll be a full deck list in the bottom down below in the box down below and yeah just leave me leave me your feedback let me know what you guys think about this variant if it's any better than the last one or just you know what ifs so anyways guys i'll see you guys next time and be sure to be sure to look at my other previous videos and me, let me know what you guys think about them 
and have a great week, guys. Like, I know it's almost February, and it's Valentine's Day, which sucks ass, but, you know, whatever. Anyways, guys, take care. Bye.